Hello and welcome to Rowan Castle Photography. What we're going to be talking about today is how to select and buy and use a tripod for photography in general. But uh, as you probably know from my video channel description, I specialise in uh, travel photography. So we'll talk a little bit about that and I'll also give you some, uh, some examples of uh, using a tripod in the field and things that can go wrong, things to look out for. So um, I'm especially going to address this video as well to people who are just starting out in photography, they're wondering what tripod to buy, etc. So the first bit of advice I would give you is uh, don't buy a tripod. Well, at least not initially. My advice to you, especially perhaps if you're on a tight budget, you've only just bought a camera, you've just bought um, a lens maybe, you've spent quite a lot of money, hold off buying a tripod and I'll tell you why. Um, because whether you really need a tripod is probably going to depend to a large extent on the kind of photography that you're going to do. And if you're just starting out, you might not really have a clear idea maybe what that is at first. So what I would say is if you are absolutely sure that you are looking to do travel photography or particularly landscape photography then the chances are you know you you will benefit enormously from having a tripod but I don't use my tripod all the time for example when I'm doing um, wildlife photography I tend to be photographing butterflies that don't stay still for very long and Really, there's no use for a tripod there because it's hard enough to photograph the butterflies just chasing them around, you know, and if you tried to set up a tripod, they would almost certainly have flown away before you, you got anywhere near them. Similarly, I'm not an expert in studio photography, but it's something that I've started doing, studio portrait photography, and while it is sometimes handy to, to have a tripod, um, sometimes even just as a place to, to stick the camera uh, while you're talking to the model or whatever um, it's a bit of a hindrance I've, I've found that it's um, it's better to be able to sort of move around freely with the camera so if you're not sure what photography you are going to be doing then hold off uh, initially from buying a tripod uh, you know until you know you've got the budget and you know you know what for, what sort of photography it is that uh, you know you're going to be interested in because similarly if you're uh, interested in maybe I don't know shooting let's say motor racing perhaps um, you're going to be able to want to pan the camera quite fast that would be pretty tricky to do on a tripod so th there's a lot of examples where a tripod may not necessarily be you know the best thing for you to own but as I say if you're very very confident that you you want to do travel photography or landscape photography then a tripod is definitely going to come in very handy so let's talk about once you've got to that stage let's talk about what you should consider when you're looking at buying a tripod now if you look at a lot of articles online I'm going to be telling you exactly the same thing here as they will tell you because it is a trap I fell into myself when I started photography um, I didn't have a huge budget and I thought okay I'm gonna get myself a tripod and I went down to the camera shop and I bought a very cheap I think it was about 30 pounds I mean this is going back quite a few years now so maybe $50 it was a cheap plastic tripod and when I got it home and tried to use it I very rapidly found that the different sections of the legs were because they were flimsy they were made of plastic and they weren't sort of really manufactured to any kind of tolerance these legs would basically shake and wobble so the tripod was worthless you know i mean luckily i was able to take it back get a refund but you're basically throwing money away so it's really important this is again why i say hold off from buying one initially i think it's really important if you're buying a tripod it's going to cost you quite a lot of money so it's important to um, think carefully about getting a decent one you know that would be my advice you know don't um, don't stint on it get one that's going to to last 
So let's talk a little bit about uh, tripods, you know, why, they, why we use them, why they're handy, why they're useful things to have, first of all, and we'll come on to the downsides later on. So really the purpose of a tripod is to hold the camera steady, basically. It's a platform for the camera. Um, when you're hand holding a camera, your hands shake and you have to use a fast enough shutter speed to, uh, to, to counter that problem. But with the tripod in the camera, securely on the tripod, you don't have to worry about that problem. So really the ideal tripod would be something that is very heavy, very rigid, um, that, that won't move around. So immediately there's a bit of a problem there because obviously you, you know you want something that you're able to carry around that's not going to weigh you down. Um, you know you can't sort of carry a block of concrete around with you. So tripods typically older tri older very old tripods would be made of wood. Um, you can also buy them made of aluminium, which obviously is is lightweight, but uh, that's not as strong. But I think realistically speaking, these days the best option um, you know if it's within your budget if you can afford it uh, especially if you're traveling and, and, and for landscape photography as well where you're going to be probably walking around trying to find the best location to take a photograph uh, would be a carbon fiber tripod so that's I think that's probably really if you're going to be based perhaps in a studio and you decide for whatever reason that you need a tripod maybe you're doing um, macro photography of something that doesn't move around you know I do a lot of uh, mineral photography collect minerals so obviously they don't move around weight isn't so much an, an issue there so if, if you are purely based in a studio photographing objects that don't move then you wouldn't necessarily need to think about buying a carbon fiber tripod you know every, any in a way in that situation you know the, the heavier and the more rigid the better because um, it's going to be absolutely stable so really um, even with a carbon fiber tripod it's a trade-off because um, as I say it's mass and rigidity that are the best things to keep the camera stable but there's clearly a trade-off between weight what you can carry around comfortably so even a decent carbon fiber tripod you're going to get vibrations for example if it's very very windy so anyway let's have a look at the uh, tripod that I bought and we'll talk a little bit about that and some of the uh, some of the features so this is my tripod here and this uh, is a carbon fiber tripod um, it's it's a full size tripod when I started off um, it's probably worth mentioning that when I started off in travel photography I, as I say I didn't have a huge budget so I bought one of these little sort of um, very very small tabletop uh, tripods the problem with those is that uh, they don't stand very high off the ground so that's fine if you want to take a photograph and it happens to be let's say if I'm trekking there happens to be a nice uh, rock available with a flat top that I can put the tripod on so it's it's up nice and high but that's not always the case so the, the problem with those tripods is that uh, a lot of the time you're going to be left with a perspective that's very close to the ground which is obviously a little bit strange so those are not I would suggest ideal for um, for general photography so anyway as I say this is the tripod that I that I bought it's a carbon fiber uh, tripod it has um, multiple uh, sections so I can show you that uh, it has the uh, the very smallest leg if you like is the, is that one so we've got three three sections there so it, it will extend really quite a long way um, and it is carbon fiber so it's I think it's about one and a half kilos for the actual tripod itself so it's quite it's reasonably lightweight it's reasonably compact um, so the the prints the key parts of the tripod obviously are the legs most tripods will also have a, a central column that you can move up and down that you can adjust 
and tighten up again. And also something to look out for um, is at the bottom of the central column, it's a good feature to have if it has this little hook. Um, one, my only sort of main criticism of this tripod, as you can see, is that over time, this hook tends to actually uh, unscrew itself. I'm, I'm actually sort of amazed I haven't lost it. Um, so that's something I have to keep an eye on. But the, the purpose of this little hook here is for extra stability. So what you can do when you've got the tripod extended is you can hang uh, your camera bag or, or something else heavy. You know, it could be a sandbag, maybe if you're in a, a studio, kind of something like that. You can hang that off that hook so that it, it hangs down vertically and just gives the tripod a little bit more stability. The only thing I would say to watch out for with that is that um, if it's a camera bag and maybe it's a very very windy day that that bag could end up swaying backwards and forwards which is is you know could introduce a sort of uh, some vibration into the tripod so if it's a still day I quite often hang my camera bag under there just just to give the tripod a bit more weight and obviously help to keep the camera steady so those are the main um, features of this tripod. There is one other thing worth mentioning, I suppose. These, it has these sort of metal inserts here that pull out and that enables the, the legs to extend uh, further than they would do normally, which is um, very handy if you're trying to sort of level the tripod on uneven ground, that kind of thing. So those are the main, the main uh, features of the tripod itself. Um, so before we go too much further, let's just talk a bit about the price of these things, which I think is um, certainly a big issue, isn't it? This tripod I bought quite a long time ago, and it was it cost me about I think three hundred and fifty pounds. So I'm not sure what that is in dollars, but you know certainly over over four hundred dollars, maybe even over five hundred which is, you know, is a lot of money. Then, which we'll come on to in a minute, you have to have some sort of uh, tripod head so that you can adjust the camera easily. This tripod head again was about three, four hundred uh, pounds. So your first reaction to that might be, wow, you know, that's a hell of a lot of money to spend on a tripod and you'd be absolutely right. So again, this is why I'm advising don't rush into buying a tripod. Think carefully about whether you actually need one, whether it's something that you're actually going to use, um, because as I say, you, your options are buy a cheap one, which is effectively useless, or buy a decent one that you can use. But although it's a lot of money, here's something to just consider. I actually bought this tripod in 2002. So that's many years ago now. And when I first bought this tripod, I was using a film uh, SLR camera. And since then I've gone through, let me see, one, two, three, I'm on my fourth SLR camera since I bought this tripod. And this tripod is basically as good as new. Um, I can seriously say this is probably one of the best bits of kit that I own, this has been through the jungle in Brazil with me. It's been in the, you know, in the Karakoram Mountains in Pakistan. It's been through the desert, it, you know, in Iran. It's, I've been to Jordan with it. And it, it basically looks pretty much, apart from the fact that um, the uh, manufacturer's little label there has just kind of worn off slightly, there's, there's basically, it's, it's as I bought it. So although it's a very big investment, what I'm saying to you is if you, Think carefully about whether you need a tripod um, and make that investment. It should be something that will last you for years and years and years, which obviously takes the uh, takes the sting out of it a little bit. So let's move on to just talking about the head of the tripod. So the head really has sort of, uh, at least in this case, has two parts. Um, it's a what's known as a ball head. So by loosening off this knob, you can actually... Uh, rotate this ball in the middle and that allows you to vary the 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 camera around it's even got a little uh, spirit level built into the actual clamp at the top so that's the actual ball head and you'll notice as well that it has um, 
uh, degree scale on the bottom and you can actually uh, rotate this head so if you're you want to take um, panoramic shots that you want to stitch together later uh, in on a computer it's very easy to, to line the shots up so you get like a maybe like a 30 degree uh, overlap between each image so that's the actual ball head and screwed onto the top of that from the same manufacturer is the actual clamp where the uh, the tripod attaches so if I just tighten this back up you can see that this uh, this clamp here has jaws so you open that little lever and that allows uh, the plate this plate has actually just got a little tripod um, a little uh, attachment for my GoPro camera on it but this is uh, actually a camera plate from the same manufacturer so once you open if you imagine that this is bolted to the bottom of the camera um, this the this has sort of little uh, little bevels on it and that slides in there and then you can lock that off and it's absolutely rock solid so those are the sort of constituent parts of a ball head now when I first started out with this tripod I, I didn't have a ball head I actually had a, a different type of system uh, made by Manfrotto I'm not sure if they still make it but it was called a, a lever action ball head I think they called it and it basically looked like a bit like a, a bicycle a handlebar and brake so it was a big thing that stuck out and you could squeeze the handle and you could move it had obviously a ball built into it so you could move the camera around and as soon as you let go of that squeezy handle it locked into position now I had that for a couple of years uh, until it um, for some strange reason it, it literally uh, fell to bits um, which is a bit of a shame but that although it was quite good that um, that lever action it was a very very because it protruded so far out from the tripod it did tend to make the camera unsteady especially if you were trying to shoot in a, a sort of portrait orientation and it, it was also a bit of a pain to actually travel with because it, it stuck out so far so that's when I decided to go you know to go for this um, for this ball head arrangement um, so perhaps it's just worth men mentioning the this this tripod is manufactured by Gitzo, who are one of the um, sort of major manufacturers. There's Manfrotto as well, make very good uh, tripods. Um, there's also tripods where you can, if you're particularly, for example, let's say you're really into photographing, uh, taking macro uh, photographs of flowers. There are actually tripods where you can take this central column out and put it in upside down if you like through the other way so your camera ends up down here upside down presumably so it makes it easier to photograph things very very close to the ground so there's also all kinds of um, options available I just happen to go for this schizo tripod because it is uh, one of the lightest uh, ones that I could find at the time and subsequently as well it seems to, to be very good in terms of the weight and um, as I say, after the uh, lever head uh, clamp disintegrated, I decided to go for this uh, ball head, which is made by a company called uh, Really Right Stuff in America. And it is uh, expensive, but um, it's very, very well put together. So I'm not particularly recommending um, any one brand of, uh, of tripod head uh, over another. Um, Incidentally, it's probably worth mentioning, I do have a much smaller version of this, a much lighter version, which I take when I take my tripod uh, trekking, that kind of thing. Uh, but what I do like about this system, I'll just show you again this plate. One of the good things about the Really Right Stuff system is this camera plate here. As I say, I've, got, I've just got a GoPro uh, mount on there, so kind of ignore that. Usually this would be at the bottom of your camera, and it's got a little uh, mark there on the back so you can line it up with the center of the camera and the center of the tripod but you'll notice it has a little um, lip on it so each of these plates is made for a specific uh, make and model of, of camera and when the camera sits on that that plate stops this that lip stops this plate from twisting uh, which is actually a really good feature what, what you'll find for example Here's a uh, Manfrotto uh, 
uh, just a generic plate so this will this will fit on anything and it will fit into one of their uh, tripod ball heads which I've got as well but the problem with this is once you screw this into the bottom of the camera if you put a, end up putting any sort of force on it it can actually twist on the bottom of the camera whereas this one once you tighten it up in place with the um, allen key there it's absolutely rock solid so it's uh, although it's expensive because every time you buy a new camera you have to buy a new um, plate um, it's it, i find it's uh, it's, a, it's a really good system um, and it's also just worth uh, mentioning uh, another accessory which i didn't actually buy until fairly recently and immediately regretted that i'd never bought one before was um, an l bracket so an l bracket if you imagine if you've got the tripod set up you've got your camera in here and it's in a landscape orientation if we want to take a uh, a portrait shot we've got to loosen this up and then we've got to um, adjust this so that the camera is now uh, in a portrait mode the problem with that is of course that this ball can only move a maximum of 90 degrees so if your tripod is not on absolutely perfectly level ground which if you're out doing landscape photography etc it's rarely going to be that means you've then got to painstakingly adjust the tripod legs to try and get this 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 part to be vertical which is um, extremely annoying so an L bracket basically rather than just having the plate at the bottom of the camera it's as the name suggests it's an L shape so the camera sits here you've got a long L plate at the bottom but then it bends round into a side plate and what that means is if you then want to take a portrait photo you can just undo the the clamp you can take the camera out and you just rotate the camera 90 degrees and you mount it then with that little plate that's on the side of the camera and on the one I've got it has a little little holes for the um, shutter release to come out and, uh, and you can just lock it in place and then you've got all of this to play with to actually make sure that your your portrait photo is, is vertical. Um, so it's massively useful. I, I can't really, I don't really understand why I never bought one before, to be honest. But uh, there are a lot of different L plates out there, and I'd highly recommend um, that you that you get one. So that's a kind of just a bit of an overview of of the tripod and the ball head. And I think it is important as well if you're thinking about spending a lot of money on a tripod, a decent tripod. You know, try and think about the whole system. You know, not just um, the tripod or the ball head you know make sure that the ball head you're getting is not too big for the tripod I mean I'd say this one is the, the maximum size you could reasonably fit on this tripod make sure that the the tripod and the ball head is rated to actually handle the weight of the equipment for most digital SLRs and most sort of normal size lenses that's not really going to be a problem but obviously once if you know if you're talking about photographing with a, a super telephoto lens or something like that um, then you know there could be quite large uh, weights involved so that's the overview of the tripod so let's just talk about now um, you know why do we actually bother to lug this thing around why is a tripod useful so I mentioned before uh, in photography if you're hand holding a camera there's camera shake so the way to get around that is to put the tri uh, put the camera on a solid uh, platform and the easiest and most versatile way of doing that is to mount it onto a, onto a tripod and that immediately uh, opens up a lot more photographic opportunities because when you're hand holding the camera I'm sure you will have heard there's a rule of thumb for setting a shutter speed to avoid sort of noticeable camera shake and blurring in the final image um, so the, the rule is um, that you you select a shutter speed that is one over um, the focal length of the lens that's for a full fr a full frame uh, sensor or 35 millimeter film camera so an example of that is if your lens is uh, let's say you're using a 50 millimeter prime lens then you know and you, you, you 
wouldn't want to go below 1 50th of a second. It's a little bit more complicated if you have a, a so-called uh, crop sensor, an APS-C sensor, because um, then that has a sort of, um, uh, that has an effect on the effective focal length of the, the, the lens. Usually you know, it's, it's, it multiplies the uh, effective focal length by about 1.6. So a 50 millimeter lens becomes, I think it is about an 80 millimeter lens. So rather than being um, 1 50th, uh, you, 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 you want one over the effective focal length. So you wouldn't want to go below 1 80th of a second. So as I say, having the camera mounted on a tripod frees you from that constraint. So what does that mean? Well, it means that with the camera on the tripod and with a shutter release cable attached to the camera or if you don't have a shutter release at a pinch you can um, probably get away with uh, setting the camera on a self timer for the, the longest setting it has I think on my camera it's two seconds so that gives you time to press the shutter button for any vibration to die down and then take the photograph but it's it's obviously much more straightforward and much easier to use a shutter release cable so once you have that set up you don't have to worry about that the handshake side of things anymore and that opens up a lot of different possibilities in terms of photography uh, most notably it allows you to take long exposure uh, shots you can because you can keep the camera and keep the composition absolutely the same um, so you might want to take let's say a, a photograph of a waterfall and get that nice sort of blurred effect with the water so that means that you can you can um, you know, you can close the, the aperture right down to say f16 uh, and, and the, uh, the, the particularly if it's dark maybe at night time that will result in a very long shutter speed but you don't have to worry about that you can leave the shutter open and you get these nice long exposure effects um, because you're keeping the camera and the composition absolutely the same it also means you can do uh, HDR photography if you're new to photography and you're not entirely sure what HDR means, it stands for high dynamic range. So what that is, is if you're trying to take a photograph of a scene and it's the, the range of tones between the shadows, the darkest parts of the image and the, the, the brightest parts of the image are too, too wide for the, ca for the camera to actually capture all of those tones, then what you can do is you can take three or more exposures of the same scene and you can expose for the shadows you can expose for the mid-tones and then you can expose for the highlights and because provided the um, image doesn't have any sort of uh, moving moving elements in it um, flowing water is usually okay but not people or anything like that then because you're keeping the composition the same that will then allow you to import those three different exposures into a computer later on and you can um, merge them with a bit of HDR software or Photoshop will do that for you and those different images will then align and you can create a nice um, HDR image. Uh, you can also obviously take photographs of, uh, again using long exposure, you can take photographs of star trails or uh, traffic trails you can uh, create a time-lapse video by taking lots of uh, photographs at a different time interval and then uh, creating a video out of them so you get a nice time-lapse. Uh, that's another thing you couldn't do uh, by hand-holding the camera. And also there's other technical uh, considerations as well. If you've got a, um, a lens or something that is quite difficult to use, for example, I have a, a Canon tilt-shift uh, lens, 24 millimeter lens, which is um, um, you know, manual focus. It has lots of different sort of uh, knobs on it to change the um, the tilt and the shift of the lens. Um, it's quite difficult to actually operate that and compose the photograph with you know with it not mounted on a tripod. Uh, you know, especially the focusing and the adjustment of the tilt and shift mechanism. It's much, I have used that camera handheld and once or twice I have got good results, uh, that lens rather, have got good results from it, but it's so much easier 
if it's you know mounted on a, on a tripod so that's kind of an overview of why we would use a tripod the other and then i just neglected to say actually the other very good reason as well is that um when you if you've got the tripod set up on solid ground it's nice and steady you're then also getting the maximum sharpness from the lenses that you've got because there's no camera shake um, the other thing you can do as well uh, is obviously it's not a problem on the new mirrorless digital slr cameras but with a, a film a film slr camera or one of the older dslr cameras like i use that has a mirror um, when you take a photograph and that mirror flips up it introduces some slight vibration into the camera and a lot of cameras will have a, a function on there called mirror lockup so not only can you have the camera stable on the tripod you can actually lock the mirror up and you can eliminate any tiny vibration from that mirror so if you're looking to get absolutely the sharpest images and you've got time uh, to set up a tripod then um, it's really advantageous to, to, to do that um, so uh, let's just talk a little bit about the practicalities of using a tripod there are a couple of things to bear in mind one is obviously that even if it's a carbon fiber tripod they are still reasonably heavy so it's not generally a problem if you know when I'm photographing say in a city or traveling around generally it's not not too bad but uh, more of a consideration if you're going to be for example doing a multi-day trek um, I still tend to take my tripod along because it's so useful but you know just have a think about um, how you're going to do that how you're going to carry it so it's um, comfortable I usually strap mine to the side of my rucksack which does make it a little bit more awkward to actually use because obviously if you're trekking and you want to take a photograph you've then got to stop take your rucksack off set the tripod up set the camera up um, so they, those are all things to sort of think about um, you know you, you wouldn't necessarily want to take a tripod along all the time so there's a couple of other considerations as well just general practical considerations and this one might sound a bit weird but definitely the case that particularly if you're in a situation where you are already a little bit out of place um, I'm thinking uh, for example when I was traveling around Iran I have to say people in Iran are super friendly so this is not anything against them but if you're already a little bit out of place if you already stick out a little bit and you you stood in the street or whatever and you get a tripod out it will definitely attract attention and it can be kind of frustrating because even if people just want to come over and have a chat with you which obviously is very nice it can be quite sort of distracting when when you're trying to take a photograph um, and you're trying to concentrate on, on what you're doing um, so that that's something to bear in mind the other thing is that um, in a lot of places uh, using a tripod is either not a good idea or even if it's okay it will kind of make you uh, public enemy number one in a, in, a, in a lot of senses so I'm thinking about for example with travel photography a lot of places you it might be very very crowded and it, it's really not considerate or not safe um, for other people or not safe just in terms of your own equipment to set up a tripod because the chances are somebody's going to stumble into it trip over it they might hurt themselves they might knock your equipment over so that's something to think about and the other thing is as well um, you'll find that a lot of places are very very anti people using a tripod now sometimes it's for those safety things like I've said which is fair enough but other times it's mainly because they are they see you as a as a professional photographer in inverted commas and they think that you're trying to make uh, money out of out of getting a shot which uh, you wouldn't be able to get otherwise because the light is very low and you can't hand hold the camera in that low light environment so they're worried that you're going to sell these images on so just an interesting story a couple of interesting stories on that one um this happened to me when i again when i was in iran i was in the uh, imam mosque in esfahan and uh, i'd set up my tripod to actually get a photograph of the 
dome ceiling of the mosque and I'd, fortunately I'd taken quite a few shots when this chap came running over and said you know you, you can't um, take photographs in here with a tripod without permission from the uh, I think he said it was the Ministry of uh, Art and Architecture or something so obviously you don't really want to get involved in, a, in an argument um, with uh, officials in, in Iran necessarily so I said that's fine I'll put the tripod away um, and luckily he didn't ask me to delete any of the images I'd taken so in that situation there are a couple of things you can do and I looked around and basically realised that I could just put the camera uh, with the lens pointed upwards flat on, on the ground um, use the uh, self timer mechanism on the on the camera just to take a photograph of the of the ceiling but as I say luckily I'd, I'd already kind of got um, a lot of the shots I was after and the second example I'd give you which actually turned out really well and I, I think I'm going to try and use this approach again in the future I was in um, Sardinia in September of last year so September 2020 I was very lucky that I was able to uh, travel there uh, even with the pandemic that's going on and I was in uh, Cagliari uh, the, the capital of Sardinia and I was trying to take a photograph uh, inside the main cathedral there when a chap came over and said you know look you can't um, you can't take photographs in here without the permission of the priest which is fair enough um, but again you know they were worried that I was going to sell these photographs so what I ended up saying to this chap is look um, I explained to him that, and luckily I've had my phone with me had uh, Google Translate so I could translate this into Italian that you can't really sell photographs inside a property say a cathedral or whatever without a property release which obviously they weren't they weren't going to give me so I explained to him I can't sell the photographs without your permission because basically nobody would touch them so what I said was how about this if you why don't you ask the priest if it's okay if I take these interior shots of the cathedral and what I'll do is if, if they come out okay if they're nice photographs if you give me your email address I will send them to you and then I'm happy for the cathedral for the church to have those images and if they want to use them for anything then that's fantastic and he agreed he would see he went away spoke to the priest and it was all okay and that worked out really well so that kind of diffused a potential sort of conflict situation so it's just something to be aware of that using a tripod a it's going to attract attention and b uh, some of that attention may be uh, slightly hostile and uh, you, you just need to be aware of that i think so um so that's an overview then so i think we've, we've talked about um good things to look for when buying a tripod as I've said you know don't rush into it look at what sort of photography you, you you're looking to do uh, before you buy one if you're gonna buy a tripod you know the phrase I often hear is you know buy nice or buy twice and I'd absolutely agree with that you know get a decent tripod something that's gonna last you a long time something that you, you you'll have for many years um, and think about the overall system you know think about the tripod and what sort of uh, head that you want to put on the tripod how it's going to attach to your camera you know there are lots of different brands out there think about the weight um, and also think about uh, how you're going to carry the tripod around you might have noticed when I showed you the tripod earlier that mine has a, a strap on it that's made from made by Gitso uh, originally I used to carry my tripod around in like a, a tripod bag so it was just like a long bag that had a, a strap that went over your shoulder and you could also strap that to a rucksack the problem with that was is that every time you use the tripod you had to take the tripod out of the bag and then set it up and that strap is much faster you can just click unbuckle the buckle at the bottom deploy the tripod and it's also in there got a very very handy little um, zipped pocket in that strap where you can put things like allen keys for uh, you know tightening up the the tripod head and things like that so um, you have a think about how you're going to carry the tripod around as well so we talked about that we talked about why the things that a tripod can do for you you know low light environment long exposure shots uh, time-lapse video HDR um, taking videos or something else I forgot to mention is if you want to take a photograph 
of yourself if you may be traveling on your own uh, you want to get a shot of yourself uh, hopefully there'll be somebody around but but you know if you're in a remote location maybe not you can set the tripod up put the camera on a, a timer take a photograph of yourself so that, that's another thing and then and then obviously we we've talked a little bit about uh, the things to watch out for when you're out and about you know um, it's worth I think adding to that you know it's not only the fact that tripod will attract attention but also your your camera is is kind of slightly vulnerable when it's attached to a tripod very easy for people to trip over the legs knock your camera over and also um, I'll share another story with you this is probably the worst mishap if you like that I've had with my equipment and it's a salutary tale so it's probably worth repeating I was traveling around Morocco I'd had a good day I'd taken rented a car I'd taken a long drive um, along the Drar Valley which is quite a famous place in in Morocco I got back to the hotel and I noticed that uh, the hotel had a nice uh, swimming pool in the in the garden of the hotel with palm trees and by then it was night and the pool was lit up so you had kind of like you know nice colors you had the orange of the um, the tiles around the pool the sort of flagstones you had the palm trees you had the sort of blue of the floodlit water and I decided to take a uh, a low light you know long exposure shot using my tripod of this this swimming pool and that all went well and um, then I decided to go back up to my room now I left the camera on the tripod and as I was walking up the stairs I must have hit one of the legs with my leg so that the the legs came in too far and just as I got close to my hotel room this enormous storm blew up out of nowhere out of the desert like huge winds I think it was raining as well and I put the camera on the trip was on the tripod on the ground on the tiled floor outside my room to turn and look at, at this storm that was coming in but where I was expecting obviously the tripod to hold the camera up because I'd accidentally hit the legs the center of gravity was off and what happened is my camera and the lens basically went lens first if you like dropped down onto the tiled floor um, which obviously was uh, was a pretty unpleasant moment it was an expensive lens on there but it's just a salutary tale I immediately took the camera in into the room and I just took some inspected it I couldn't see anything luckily or immediately wrong I took some test shots um, everything seemed fine and had it checked out by the manufacturer of the camera and the lens when I got back luckily there was no damage everything was still fine but I think the reason for that was and this is a good tip to remember I had the cameras uh, the, the lenses lens hood attached to the lens so that was on there so when the lens had fallen onto the ground this plastic lens hood although it's only plastic it's a very dense very stiff plastic had taken the force of the impact and it had actually permanently deformed the lens hood which okay it cost me a little bit of money to replace but clearly, clearly not as much as replacing the lens would have done um, and that I'm convinced saved the lens and the camera from from being damaged so uh, so apart from the fact that the lens hood is obviously good because it blocks out any stray light, helps to control flare and that kind of thing from the sun or in this case at night from a floodlight, the fact that that lens hood was on there, uh, you know, protected the camera. So what I would say is, it, you know, when you are using your camera on a tripod, use the lens hood, but also try to maintain some awareness of your surroundings. You know, are there, you know, kids running around, people not minding what they're doing. You know animals running around that kind of thing that could easily knock over your equipment so um, anyway I hope that uh, this video has been of some use if you've got any questions please put them in the comments um, this channel's new so um, uh, hopefully I'll be doing more of these videos in the future but if you like this video if it's helped you out then uh, give it a like and uh, please do um, hit the subscribe button so I hope that was useful and uh, I'll see you next time.